Everyone, it is 7 p.m., so we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for being here. Um, just so you know that this uh, session is being recorded, so parents who are arriving late um, can see it later, um, catch up on what they're missing. Um, for this event, uh, we're going to have uh, myself kind of do an overview of the arts programs, um, and then we're going to have our um, student ambassadors um, share a little bit about their personal experiences on the various arts programs that they participated in last summer. And then we're going to have time for a Q&A at the end. So you can see the Q&A section is open. Um, so any questions that you guys want to get answered or you don't know the answer to um, things that come to you as you're listening to our students present, feel free to put them in that Q&A and we'll have time to answer those questions. So introduce myself, my name is Erin. I'm a global education advisor with CIEE. Um, I also taught uh, visual arts for 10 years before working for CIEE. Um, I've had several of my own students travel, uh, my art students travel on CIEE's art programs. So um, I do have some experience with that, with those there. Just to give you an idea, an overview of CIEE in case you're not super familiar, um, CIE is a, a nonprofit exchange organization. We've been um, in business for over 75 years, so we have a long history. We support 40,000 students every year on different exchange programs. Um, and we have the largest scholarship fund for high school students um, in the US, um, which is a really big benefit that we can offer families. So these are all of our locations um, of our programs. Uh, we have arts programs all over the world. The arts encompasses not just visual arts, but also theater arts, creative writing, um, and other pop culture related arts like K-pop and anime. Those are also arts programs um, and they're in various locations around the world. So like I mentioned, um, our arts programs do not just talk about um, a singular um, type of art. Uh, we support a variety of different types. Um, so you can see the topics that we teach and then as well as the location where you can study, study those things. So we have art making, which is more of a studio art practice in Prague, um, art history in Rome, creative writing in three different locations, London, Edinburgh, and uh, Rome, uh, theater, arts in, theater arts in London, fashion in Paris, um, K-pop in Seoul, and anime um, in Tokyo. And actually, we do have another creative writing program that is in Kyoto, Japan as well, that's brand new this year, um, that is not on the screen currently, um, but that is a brand new program that is being offered. So all of our programs, no matter which one you're doing, are going to have a similar flow um, to their day. So we have um, two to three hours of interactive um, classes where you're focused on your topic. So if you're doing creative writing, you might have two to three hours Monday through Friday where you're really focused on the educational side of study abroad. Um, this could be in a classroom, but it could also be uh, workshops in the community, maybe meeting with professionals in the industry as well um, in, your, uh, in the country that you're living in. We also build in cultural activities, which students do as a group. Cultural activities are, are things that are more like touristy experiences um, that give a, a greater understanding of the country and the culture in which the kids are studying in. Um, things like museum visits, historical sites. Um, they'll have uh, sometimes culinary classes can be considered cultural activities, um, dance classes, things like that. And then we also build in some free time for students. Um, you know, they are living abroad um, during this time. So um, we have structured free time um, with limits about like the parameters of where the kids can go as well as for how long um, and uh, how solo they can be. And then um, on the weekends, those are more um, fun experiences. Uh, they're time for kids to really um, get to experience the country that they're living in um, and kind of have a break from their class schedules. Okay, and I'm gonna let, I'm gonna turn this over to um, one of our global ambassadors who's gonna explain about her art history program in Rome. Uh, hi, um, this slide is zoomed out a little. Is this better? Uh, no, it's still cropped. 
It's cropped. Hmm. Okay, hold on one. Let me try to reshare. Is that better? Uh, no, it's still not showing the full screen. Okay. Can you at least see every picture? Uh, it's showing like a quarter of the screen. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screenshot, I'm gonna put it in the chat, and then I'm gonna let you go ahead and share about your experience. Okay, thanks. Of course. Are you able to see the whole screen now from this perspective? Um, it still shows only part of it. It's okay, I could start okay. talking. All right. Um, hi, my name is Talia. I'm a junior in high school from New York. This past summer, I studied abroad with CIE for connecting Italian art history and culture in Rome. I really enjoyed how my experience allowed me to view history in depth um, in a way, we could notice a lot of details you might not usually pay attention to. Uh, our CAE professor helped guide us throughout the different places, like the Colosseum, the Castel Sant'Angelo, and the Marcellus Theater. I really enjoyed learning about not just Renaissance art, but we also visited uh, more modern and contemporary pl places, like the National Gallery of Modern and Contemporary Art and the Maxi Museum, which were a lot more interactive. Um, and we also engaged in workshops focusing on fresco and mosaic, um, where we could each express our own creativity and short, sort of share our experiences with each other. I really loved how hands-on it is and how um, the CIE program helped push me outside of my comfort zone. It was really scary um, at first studying abroad and being miles away from home, but I really soon connected with my fellow peers about sharing a love for art and history. And that really helps me um, feel more comfortable with my experience and make a lot of unforgettable memories. Um, I'll share my referral code in chat, um, in the chat um, for $200 off. Uh, thank you for coming on tonight. Oh, Hi. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ruby. Um, I'm a sophomore. And over the summer, I studied abroad in Edinburgh. And well, I've been like, um, writing has been a passion of mine for a really long time, but I've never done any classes specifically for it. So getting to go to another country and spending three weeks immersing myself in this subject was really cool, especially because all the other people who were there shared the same like passion. So you really immediately make this deep connection with them over this special thing that you share. And then um, also just being in the country, there was so much history and art all around in the city because you'd be like walking down a normal street and then you just turn and there'll be some great um, church or monument or something like here. There's a photo of the Scott Monument, which was one of my favorites. And it's just there's so much inspiration in the city. And I think that's why if you care about art and you're interested in art, it's so important to go to new places to get that kind of inspiration because you're just writing every single day. And it's like you really get to grow as a writer because you get to be in these places that so many writers like got their start from. And it's just really cool. And then also there was a big focus during my program on oral storytelling, which at first I wasn't really 
that interested in going in because I just hadn't really known much about it. But it's honestly such a big part of the culture of Scotland. And one of our instructors was actually a professional oral storyteller. And she like did the performance for us. And as soon as you see that, you understand it and you understand the importance of it. So that was such a cool new skill to learn. And then you can see here, there's a photo of a studio and that's from our final project where we actually got to professionally record one of our writing pieces. So that was just so cool to get to work on that skill and then also to get to have like something to take home to show my work and everything I learned. And then there's some photos here as well as all the places we got to go, like Dean's Village and Inverness. And it was just such a cool experience to get to see all these things, especially because we were really using like the city as our classroom. We obviously would sometimes be in actual classrooms, but we'd also be going out and about on excursions and then like at a museum or something, we would get prompts there, which really helped to just give inspiration and stuff. Like here, there's a photo of like an inscription on the ground. And that was actually our first day there. And we had to write something based off of, there was a bunch of like writings on the ground and you got to choose one and write off it. And there was just a bunch of fun things like that. And I feel like I grew so much and learned so much on this experience. So I would definitely recommend it to everyone. I think it just changed my life in a lot of ways as a writer and just as a person getting to have all these new experiences and make so many new friends. So I would definitely recommend it. And I'll put my referral code in the link if anyone in the chat, if anyone wants it. Hey guys, um, my name's Audrey. So I originally decided to do the creative writing program more because it was located in London. I like I liked writing at the time, but I wasn't crazy for writing. Um, and I just really wanted a chance to travel. And I think my experience like taking a creative writing class actually made me love creative writing even more. And um, when I got home, like I was super inspired to be able to write like poems and stories, which I never really had before. I think what's so impactful about the experience is you're surrounded with other people who also have similar interest in writing and um, you're able to hear about the stories of the locations. You're able to really immerse yourself and feel like what it is to be like one of those authors from back then who wrote those stories. And it's also an amazing chance to like be able to explore the country or the place you're visiting. And I went on plenty of day trips. We did one at Oxford and then we did another one at Stratford-upon-Avon where is where Shakespeare grew up. And I think for a lot of it, I was able to realize a lot of the cultural in, like impacts it has. And as well, like, you know, just be familiar and learn more, like why writing is such a pivotal like tool to have in society and how we can use it. Um, I also think which was super impactful was the connections I made. Um, on my trip, I made a lot of friends and I still talk to my friends till this day. And um, I think just going there, experiencing it, getting to know people is amazing. We were at the bookstores like every day in my program. And we actually met one of the authors of the book we were reading um, in our class, which was really cool. And we took like a photo with her. And I think that was like super cool, like how you're in such a literary place, like you see and experience like everything around you. Um, and yeah, I would definitely consider um, at least joining like a program. Um, I know sometimes like when you're deciding if you wanna do like an art program versus a language program, there's a lot of different factors um, and they're all great. Um, I really think the art program, it's more like creativity um, and you're using a lot more of your interpretations of stuff. Um, it's also a little different cause you do stay in a hotel versus a host family, which I do think is pretty important, um, but Overall, I think just studying abroad is such an amazing opportunity and being able to experience like such a different culture and get to know people like outside of where you come from is key. Um, and I also put my referral code in the chat as well, so. Awesome, thank you. Okay, and we have one more student here with us. Lila, is this your um, slide? I wasn't sure. Yeah, um, hello. 
Um, my name is Lila Green, and last summer I studied abroad in Tokyo, Japan on um, CIEE's anime and manga program. Um, so in this program, we, we really learned a lot about pretty much every aspect of anime and manga. Like, it wasn't just specifically geared towards, like, just drawing, like, in, like, the specific art style, but it was a lot more, like, learning about, like, the history and, like, the cultural impacts of it as well. Um, it was really a really amazing experience for me because I've always really loved, like, Japanese culture and, like, like anime and manga. I've always been a big fan of it, and I've always wanted to, like, visit Japan uh, to really see all that kind of stuff in person. And this trip was really fun because it let me learn a lot more about like anime and manga, a big passion of mine, as well as like help me learn a lot more about like how to kind of write those kinds of stories or how to like draw um, in more like in that kind of style and better my own like art. Um, but it also let me like meet a lot of new people who actually shared the same interests as me. Like here in the US, I don't have a lot of friends who are like super into that kind of stuff. But when I went to Japan, I was able to meet a lot of like people who like that kind of stuff. And pretty much like everywhere we went, we got to see like a lot of really cool things and that like kind of related to that kind of like um, passion of mine. Like in these pictures, um, I have two pictures of like the food, like the really like iconic like crepes from Harajuku. We got to eat those. And then like an omu rice from like a cafe. Um, so we got to see like all of these really cool things that are like in anime and manga, like in person. And it really helped, like I think me and like everyone else on the trip really learn like a lot more and think about like this like passion of ours, like a lot more deeper. And um, like pretty much all of our activities were really fun and it really let us like think about both anime and manga not as like like less as like just a simple hobby but more as like a really important and like culturally important art form like a lot of our activities were um, like we would go out to somewhere like Akihabara or like a like a museum that showed like the artworks of artists like Osamu Tezuka who made Astro Boy and then we would do assignments kind of reflecting on that and kind of thinking about like where like places like Akihabara or like like art like different artists fit into like Japan's history and just kind of anime and manga in general and I think it's just really important to learn about like these kinds of like hobbies um, in a much deeper way because it, can, it like really helps you think about things like a lot deeper and it really helps you be a lot more like I guess culturally aware when you're consuming this kind of media and helps you like think deeper about it so um if you guys want you can use my the QR code right there um for my referral link I'll also put it in chat but um thank you All right, and um, I have been answering some of the chats uh, or the questions in text if it um, was something I could answer in a, um, a written response. Um, we do have one open um, question in general that um, a student asked. Um, she, uh, the student said, thinking about CIE in general, what if I do it get accepted but end up turning down my spot? Would I still be sent other opportunities even if I do not end up participating? I'm assuming you're talking about applying for a scholarship. Um, if you are applying for a scholarship and you turn down your um, turn down your scholarship, that's totally within your right to do that. Um, you can still apply for a future scholarship in another year, as long as you are still um, within the age restrictions that is allowable for a scholarship. So um, if you are a freshman, sophomore, or junior, then you are eligible for a Global Navigator Scholarship. And if you are a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, you're eligible for the Academic Merit Award Scholarship. Um, hopefully that answers your question. If any other students have any other questions, um, please feel free to put them in our chat. And if you have questions about specific programs, 
for our global ambassadors, they would be happy to answer them. All right, I have a question for each student. Maybe you guys can share what your favorite uh, class or lesson was um, and maybe the most impactful. Um, I'll start. Um, I visited well, two museums, the um, Maxi and Zycona Museum, I really enjoyed because um, although it like focused on modern art in some parts, a lot of it was interactive and it was really cool like taking photos and having that sort of fun experience of everyone. Like we made um, light painting or like we got to see like really cool lighting areas and that was really fun that they kind of incorporated it as part of the program. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, one class that I remember was we had this um author come in and um she shared about like her books and stuff. So it was really cool to have someone who's actually like doing it come in and she had us make like these maps and like draw them out and we used like rice and we poured down the rice and like made it into maps and then. It was because she wrote like fantasy books, so she needed to do that for her thing. But it was also just kind of gave a new perspective on storytelling because it kind of showed you like if you're creating a story, all the things you have to think about to like logically make it make sense to like create a world. So I feel like that was really helpful for world building and just learning something that I really hadn't thought about and a new perspective on things and having someone new come in was really cool. One of the lessons that I think I'll remember is that we went to the Globe Theater the night before where a lot of the Shakespeare's plays were and we saw the play The Taming of the Shrew and then the next day in class we talked a lot about like what we saw and we talked a lot about like the effects of the play versus like you know the, the writing of it and I think being able to see it both visually and read about it was super interesting and I think it was so cool to be able to like Relate like the costumes and the acting and also kind of like some of the messages behind both of them and like um for me like it's super important because like I'm really able to now like both see kind of what's happening and be able to see like the effects like of like seeing it visually versus like written um I think my favorite like lesson and like the one that I'm gonna remember the best um, it was just like an in-class lesson. Like we didn't go out anywhere. There was there was no like accompanying, I guess like bigger activity. But it was just a, like a small lesson we did in class where we learned about um, more like psychological and like philosophical anime and like manga and like the rise of that in like the 80s and 90s and how that like connects to like Japan's economic like state at that time. And I just thought that was really fascinating because it like connected two things that I really, really like, like like philosophical and like psychological anime, and then also like more of like Japan's kind of like more modern history. So that, like I think about that kind of stuff a lot. And like, I don't know, it was just really like, it was just really like cool to look. Awesome. Um, thanks for sharing, guys. I, I'm so intrigued by all of your uh, programs, and I want to learn all of these things, too. There's another question in the chat. It says, uh, which type of arts of the uh, of the program mainly focused on? 
Um, I am going to, I put this slide up here just to kind of answer that question. Um, so when it comes to the arts, we have a variety of different programs that you can study um, from art making to art history to creative writing, theater arts, fashion design, K-pop, anime, and we even have a creative writing and manga program as well. Um, so there's, we're always adding new programs as well. So, but these are the ones that we currently support um, for the arts. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. And then the next question I have in the, in the Q&A um, box is, in the Japan program, I saw there is an opportunity to take a Japanese language class. Do we start completely from scratch or do they adapt depending on how much the student already knows? I wonder if Lila can help answer that question. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, so for specifically my Japanese program, like it didn't focus on the Jap like Japanese language, but we we did take a few classes, but they were really like minimal. And I it was really just review for like someone like me who is already studying Japanese. So if you do want to go really in depth and really focus on like learning the, like the language, then you should probably take the other course that focuses just on Japanese language but um, if, if you do want to take the art program like definitely take the art program because you're still gonna be like starting from scratch and like learning Japanese but also just being in Japan you'll learn a lot anyways so um, yeah so basically you'll be starting from scratch no matter what and everyone's gonna be learning like the same kind of basic phrases yeah, in general, um, the topic programs are not focused on language learning. So we do support students in um, basic survival language skills in all of our programs where students are um, in a, a country that doesn't have um, native English speakers. So if you are on the Japan anime program, you're definitely going to have like one or two language classes here or there to help support you just getting by day to day while you're in Japan. Um, but that's not the main point of the program. And so whether if you already know those basic survival skills, then you'll probably just get more practice in it um, before you're in the community using it. Um, but if you're interested in really studying the Japanese language, I would encourage you to apply to one of our Japanese language programs. And if you do have some proficiency in Japanese, maybe you take a Japanese class at school or something like that, those programs, they do take a placement test before you arrive so that we know whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced. And we have three leveled classes that are differentiated based on your level of experience in the language. Um, and then that's going to really be focused, focused, focused on language development and pushing new language acquisition um, and language practice. Um, so those are the two kind of different programs that I would recommend. So the answer is different depending on which program you're talking about. Hopefully that helps. Um, yes, okay, there's a question that's coming up about Prague. Um, can you talk about accommodations, hotel name, and how many roommates and how are students matched? Um, I can talk about like what the accommodations are like. Um, each year, our accommodations kind of um, change depending on like how many students are signed up for the program. So I can't really tell you an exact name of a hotel or um, where you're going to be staying because it really will depend on the enrollment numbers and also um, different you know, requests of students and things like that. Um, but I can't tell you what the accommodations are like. So one second, let me look at that. Um, um, while I am looking up that information, um, feel free to add any other um, questions in the chat. And if the students want to come off and talk about maybe what their accommodations were like in their programs, um, that might help give an idea of the variety of accommodations on these types of arts programs. Um, I can. My accommodation was really nice. It was like student accommodations in like college, like student accommodation things. And basically it was a flat. And then you had flatmates who 
So everyone had their own room. So you had your own bedroom and then your own private bathroom, which I don't know if that applies to the other programs, but it was for mine. And it was really nice because I went into it expecting to have to like share bathrooms and have a roommate, roommate and stuff. But it was really nice to be able to come home at the end of the day and like have your own room to like re rewind and stuff because there is a lot of socialization. And then there was a shared kitchen and a shared living space where me and my friends would like watch movies and stuff. And then every morning you could make breakfast. And if you wanted to not go out for dinner, you could get ingredients and make dinner there. So it was super nice and definitely comfortable and like a good size too. In my program, we um, stayed with also the theater program. So it was the theater and the creative writing program. So there's about 50 of us. And we were at a hotel is pretty much located at the central of London. Um, and we were like, we had like room number. So you would share with a roommate. And we also did share like bathrooms. Um, but it was one roommate. And a lot of our roommates were chosen based on our interests from filling out the application before. And we also had like program leaders who would check in with us every night at our hotel to make sure everything was good. And I had a friend who did have an issue with a roommate and they were super accommodating and they just switched it really quickly. So it was super nice. Um, for my program, we stayed in a hotel that was also very central in the city. Um, it was a very walkable distance to the CIE center and to a lot of other places around Rome. Um, our room size really varied. Um, some people had some people had a two person room. I had a four person room. Um, so it was like really different for everyone, but we usually got along um, very well. Um, we had a program leader on each floor and we also had breakfast in the hotel um, each day. Um, yeah, similar to everyone else, we stayed in a hostel for my program and it was it was pretty nice like it was really clean and it was in like the Itabashi area of Tokyo so it was like 20 minutes away from like all the like major places like Harajuku or like Akihabara so it was like really easy to get to like like different places and like in the hostel there's like four people to a room for one room that like 10 people created by like gender and we had like a kitchen um and like bathrooms that we all could share on like the same floor we were on and um we actually also took like all the classes in the actual hostel so we just had to like walk to like into like a little room to take the classes so we didn't have to like go outside and yeah it was like pretty nice and like not like too many people um i was able to find some details on the czech um program and the art making program um it does look like it is um hostel slash hotel housing which means you're likely going to have um a roommate um, and a suite mate, um, and then a shared bathroom situation with maybe a few other students. Um, I do know that sometimes on these programs, depending on enrollment and depending on availability, um, you are sometimes able to um, request uh, a solo room, um, but that does cost extra. Um, but that just depends on the program. It just depends on the uh, housing um, situation and the enrollment numbers um, for each program in each session. So like sometimes something might be available in session one, but it might not be available in session two. So it really depends. Um, but uh, we do work with you to make sure that you're in a comfortable housing situation um, and that you have students um, and roommates who do match your personality. Okay, I think that that is the last question that we have. And I'm going to maybe pause a little bit and see if we have any other questions sometimes as soon as we have like free time, they'll come through.
All right, it looks like that's the end of our questions. Um, we're gonna hang out a little bit longer in case questions come up, but if you um, have no other questions for us, um, awesome. Um, go ahead and scan the QR code um, and you can maybe sign up for some other sessions um, over the next couple of days. Um, we have a variety of different topics and sessions coming up, including sessions on applying for scholarships and um, filling out college apps using your um, experience, all of those things. Okay, uh, looks like we do have one more question. On average, how many students go on a trip? Um, it really depends on the program. Topic programs such as the arts programs do tend to be a little bit smaller. Um, so like 15 to 30 students um, in one session. Um, but the, uh, the language programs tend to be a little bit larger. Um, and I don't know if you guys want to share maybe how many students were on your programs. So to give that realistic perspective in a variety of different topics. Um, for my program, there were 40 of us, but we were split up into about like 220 um, person groups of two um, program leaders per group. In my group, there was 20. 25, but we were also kind of with the theater group as well. So in total, we were 50. But if you think of the individual groups, like it was 25. Um, I had 30 people, but it was also split up into like three pods. But you did still interact with everyone. It was just like a bit split up as well. Yeah, we also had maybe about like 25 to 30 people in our group. But yeah, it was split into two like different groups for like most of the time so like on outings I, we would really only be with like like 10 to 15 people awesome so you guys got a good idea of like the variety of different sizes of programs it really just depends on the program um and the capabilities um in general we have um um our program leaders um uh, we are going to have a certain number of program leaders per kids. Um, I believe it's 12 or 15 to one. So for every 12 or 15 students, um, there is an additional program leader. Um, and a program leader is in a teacher from the U.S. who is um, on staff um, helping with supporting students while they're on programs. Um, you mentioned some of the kids mentioned that program leaders lived um, one program leader per floor where they were staying. Um, so they also stay in the group accommodations to help support students with um, things that they might need in the middle of the night and all sorts of things like that. So, okay. Um, and then the next question is, if you're living in a hostel or hotel, are there washing machines? Since it's three to four week-ish programs, is there an opportunity to wash clothes or is hand washing expected? Do you guys want to share your experience with washing clothes? Yeah, for sure. So what we had is the CIE center was maybe like a five minute walk from our hotel. So each week, like it was usually Friday, we would take our like laundry and just leave it at the CIE hotel. And then it took them usually the weekend. And then like on that Monday, we would get all of our clothes back that are cleaned. Um, and then they also had it where like, if you didn't want to wait for like that long of a time, they could bring you to a wash place that was nearby and you could just bring like some pocket money to like spend to wash your clothes. Um, I had a similar experience um, with Audrey. We had a laundry service that was collected at the hotel weekly and we'd get it back, I think a day or two later. Um, Mine was a little bit different. It was like in the building of the accommodations there was like a laundry room so there was like a day where our pod could go do it together but you could also just go do it yourself anytime and it wasn't really like someone else like it would be taken and you'd get it back a few days later for me it was just like you did it yourself and then after it was done in like an hour you just go get it yeah mine was also a little different from um, we also had like washing machines and I think two washing machines and two dryers in each of the bathrooms. So they would get kind of like filled up quickly, but you could just go do your laundry whenever you wanted. 
like a lot of people did their laundry on like our free days. Um, I know I did my laundry like really late at night sometimes. Um, but yeah, in our hostel, we just had like the laundry, like lawn, like the laundry things like in the actual bathroom and you could just do it whenever you wanted. Awesome. So we find a way for you to do laundry, but it may not be the same way depending on everybody's accommodations and those types of things. Um, but yes, there is availability to do laundry while you're on the program. All right, since um, we're still waiting for questions, maybe um, having I'll ask a question and then if that spurs any ideas for other people in the chat. Um, so I guess my next question is I talked about like your favorite lessons, maybe what are some of your favorite, like personal moments, like um, maybe not related to your topic, but just related to living in the country that maybe really stick out in your mind as like a personal favorite memory. Um, I really enjoyed getting chips to get um, gelato. In Rome, it was a lot different than home. The summer was very hot and we had to adjust a lot, but we got gelato almost every day. And that was always a really fun experience, <laughs> trying new flavors. Mine's more of a funny story. When we were in Stratford upon Avon, we all tried to go rowing without having any experience. They kind of just sent us out in the boats and we all fell in and I just remember it like being super funny and we were like all trying to work together to figure out like how to get back and I just really felt close with everyone and just like having such a shared and like experience was super fun. Um, One of my favorite memories was actually the day before like the last day and it was my like friend on the trip her birthday so me and my other friends we like threw her a little party like we went out to the store and got decorations and balloons and we made a cake and got snack and stuff and then we had her come in and like surprised her and stuff and just seeing her reaction was really fun because by that point we had all become so close so it was kind of like a little goodbye thing as well since it was like we were leaving and it was just really fun because like we really surprised her and she was really happy about it. Um, I think my favorite memory was one night when we had like a free night. I got to go to this pop-up store for like one of my favorite singers. And it was like the last night of the pop-up store. So I was like trying, I was like rushing there with one of my other friends to like get there before it closed so I could like, like get like buy all the like merch and stuff and it was just it was just really fun because I like never get to get that kind of like merch but like being in Japan I was able to actually go to like a really cool like pop-up store like literally dedicated to that kind of merch so it was just really cool being able to like I guess like get stuff for like my interests that are kind of more niche in like the U.S. Yeah, I love that. Um, and so we're getting to the end of our session together. So I guess I would love to hear from you guys what your final pieces of advice are for students who are looking to travel next year. Um, you know, what are the things that you wish you knew before you left? Um, and, you know, when selecting your programs, what are the things that you think you students should keep in mind? Um, I'd say to definitely like be willing to go outside of your comfort zone. The first few days were definitely the scariest because there was a lot of getting used to for everyone. But um, it was a new experience for everyone as you go through it. So you really connect with people and you make friends like very quickly. So you get more used to it as the program goes on. Um, and I'd say to definitely research the um, climate or like the weather to expect going in. Um, Rome is very hot, so you have to know how to like pack accordingly.
Um, yeah, I would just say, like, don't be too nervous because, like, in the beginning, like she said, everyone's nervous. No one is going into this except for, like, a couple people with already knowing people or with friends. So just, like, talk to people, try and make friends, and you can really make strong connections with people. And then when you're trying to decide um, what thing to do, um, I would just say, like, do what you want to do. Like, don't let anyone else like decide for you like it should be something that you want to do because I think that's really important for if you're gonna go away from home and do something that really does force you to step outside of your comfort zone make sure it's something that you're passionate about and something that you want to spend your time doing because then you'll also have that connection with the other people on the program as well. I think staying in the moment is really important. You know, you go there and you're thinking about all the trips, all the excursions and everything you're doing, but making sure you're also like taking time to like get to know people and hear everyone's story and not necessarily worry about what's going to happen next. I think it's super important. Kind of going off of Ruby with the idea of just following what you're passionate about. You know, there's so many great programs out there. And even if you're not really interested in maybe um, a topic program, there's like language programs and there's definitely going to be something out there that you probably would like to do um, and with the programs just make sure that you're looking to seeing what activities you're doing if you're deciding between two of them or more specifically maybe what you want to learn on the trip or like take away for the future um yeah I think one of my biggest pieces of, of advice is like when you're on the trip just kind of like put yourself out there um, like everyone around you is like going to be interested in the same things as you. Um, so it's like really easy to make friends. Like I think on my trip, like it was really one of the first times that I could like really confidently like go like talk to people. Um, and I think that really made the trip really good. And I think other than that, um, before you travel, like um probably like yeah just try to be a lot more prepared like look at the weather like Tokyo was a lot hotter than I expected like I knew it was going to be hot but like it was still like way hotter and then also like like just kind of look at like the culture of like the place you're going to first just to like kind of like prepare yourself for going there like so you're kind of like ready to go Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. We're getting to the end of our hour. And I do like to leave a little bit of space between um, this session ending and the next session starting. Um, so we're going to hang out until you guys log off just to see, make sure that there's no last minute questions we can answer. Um, but otherwise, if you do have further questions, you can um, uh, ask the questions um, to our um, general um, study abroad um, info uh, email address, which is which is hsabroad at ciee.org. I'm going to put it in the chat hsabroad at ciee.org. So if you think of questions later, um, feel free to um, email us at that location and you will get an answer. Um, thank you so much to my student and my global ambassadors who are here to share their experience. And um, I hope we see you in another session later on in our virtual fair.